All right, guys, I had a lot of interest in my last post uh, from yesterday, and I had a little bit of spare time, so I figured I'd sort of walk you through my, my workflow on that on that post. So we'll hop into Lightroom here, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm showing you how I went from this initial raw drone photo over to that, which is uh, what I posted yesterday. So yeah, let's, uh, let's hop into it. Uh, so initially, when I start editing photos, I play around with my the lighting in general so uh, I'll sort of get it to a spot that I like and uh, fast forward through a little bit show you guys what I do So typically when I edit my photos, uh, clarity is something I like to add a little bit to it, uh, which a lot of people do go overboard with it, so I, don't know, I just like to throw a little touch in and um, I think I did something right around like 50-ish, um, so it gets some nice detail in the water over there. Um, yeah, and just uh, this is also one thing I've just sort of been doing, developed over time, where I, I boost the vibrance a little bit um, and then sort of bring the saturation down a decent amount. I guess that's sort of like the, the general style I've developed. And then uh, out to the S curves over here. I like to throw a nice little S curve. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe flatten the blacks a little bit. All right, so now on to color. Um, typically when I get going on the color sliders, I like to uh, scroll all the way down to the camera calibration and uh, just sort of mess with that a little bit before I start ma messing around with my HSL sliders. So under hue here, a little more of that, that teal type color, I don't know, somewhere around like 35 sounds good. And then also drop the saturation a little bit more. So that's, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm sort of just focusing on the water here. Um, we're, we're gonna throw a mask over the sand over here and we'll, uh, yeah, so we'll be messing with the colors of the sand. So right now I'm pretty much just focusing on the water. So after the camera calibration uh, colors have been messed around with, I typically go back up to the HSL sliders and just sort of mess around with it, go for the general color scheme that I like. So I'll fast forward through this a little bit, but you can sort of see um, generally what I did for this photo. So a big one here on, so remove chromatic aberration. And then also do your, I always do my uh, uh, profile corrections. Yeah, so one more thing on the, um, uh, when adjusting just general color, temperature and tint. Uh, on this photo, I was, like I said, I was mainly focusing on the blues of the water. So I'd probably wanna, scooch this over just a touch more so like let's say nah, I guess that looks pretty good so one more thing with this photo is um, it isn't shot 100% straight down the the gimbal wasn't angled straight down of the camera of the drone um, you can sort of see that um, that it's angled up a little bit this way so with this photo I uh, messed around with the vertical transform to make it look like it's it's shot down a little bit more so as you can see um, uh, we're also going to crop this in because this area looks a little bit weird as it's like fading away. Um, so we'll crop that in a little bit. Maybe even a little more. Get like, so the waves all generally look like they're the same. So, yeah, that looks pretty good to me. So next up, I want to bring the color and the sand back in, that, uh, that like nice golden sand color. So um, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can throw either masks over here, but I also want to keep the, uh, the umbrella nice and blue. So I think what I'm going to do here is, let's see. So let's, let's boost our yellows up quite a bit. And then we're just going to sort of paint this over. 
Yeah, so we'll mess around with the light a little bit. Contrast, we'll pull contrast down. Uh, let's fill that in a little more. Cool, so that looks uh, generally pretty good to me. So next up, we'll hop into Photoshop and I'll show you how I sort of mirrored this from one side to another, sort of expanded a little bit and also got that umbrella right dead center. So we'll hop into Photoshop over here. We're in Photoshop here. So our umbrella is way out of the way. So first of all, we're going to make a clipping of that umbrella. So we'll zoom way in on it over here. Um, so we're gonna go over to the magnetic lasso tool and sort of follow roughly along the edge. I'm just doing it very quick to show you guys a general idea. Typically I like to throw a little feather on there so those lines aren't really stark when you're moving it over. But then uh, just hit Command C to copy that over and then uh, Command V and we officially have the new umbrella so we can sort of move this new umbrella around and uh, you can hit Command T to transform it. If you hold Shift it keeps the, the aspect ratio the same. So you can pull it around like a huge umbrella on the beach or shrink it down a bit. Yeah, so place that there for now. And then we have to uh, copy this layer. Oops. So, so next up, now we have the, the umbrella placed there, which we'll just hold on to and it's in layer one. So next up, we want to duplicate uh, this layer, the background. So we'll right click on that and then hit duplicate layer. So now we have two of the same thing in there pretty much. So we want to flip it around so that we have water both on both sides of this image. So um, we're going to hit command T and then you just rotate it around. Uh, let's get that to 80, boom. And then we'll enter, lock that down in place. So I also wanted to get rid of all the footsteps in this, or most of the footsteps. There's some that are washed out there. But, um, so to do that, we can go to that little box right there, clip that out, and just hit delete. So now we have that really, really strong line, which I'll, I'll show you how we're gonna merge that together in a second. Yeah, so we just, we go over to the move tool, move it over there a little bit. So get something that's like generally close uh, to what you like. I mean, you can have the water pulled out a little ways over or whatever. Um, yeah, so I, as you can see, I sort of have this general line that follows across. So what we're gonna go to being on the same layer, um, go to the erase tool and we have a pretty big brush with a light hardness. So it'll like slowly start to take away uh, bits of this layer. So as you can see, if you just sort of like click around, it'll help to fade the image in. So yeah, it's it's blended pretty well right there. So now we're gonna center everything, transform this whole guy. So I have both layers selected, transform it. Um, so to crop it for Instagram, uh, so we're gonna have to shrink this down a little bit. So that generally fits pretty well. And then uh, to crop it for Instagram, I had to sort of expand it a little bit, which you don't want to stretch it too far, or else the waves will look really fake. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna bring, bring that guy in a bit. So I could I could adjust the canvas size right now, but I'll probably just do it in Lightroom to set the four or five aspect ratio. So um, I'm ulti ultimately gonna want this uh, this photo pivoted over and with the umbrella right in the middle. So, okay, we'll go back to the umbrella real quick, go to the move tool, move that dead center. So I ultimately wanted uh, the viewer to be view viewing it from the bottom and have the shadow coming across at the side. So we're gonna pivot the umbrella 90 degrees. So you can see, that looks, that looks pretty good. And then we can also scale it down just a little bit.
perfect. So that's the general idea. So pretty much we go, we go back here, file, save, save the image. And we go back over to Lightroom, boom, here's our new image. So then if you hit command left bracket, hit it two more times, it pivots it over. And then we can just go to crop, set our aspect ratio four five. That's generally the idea. And that's pretty much it. That's how I uh, threw my post together.